There are not many antennas that are actually fun to use. In that, I mean the joy of adjusting and tweaking it, and the thrill of making a contact from thousands of miles away. One such antenna that delivers both is this, the Chameleon F-Loop antenna. Now magnetic loop antennas are not for everyone. In this video, I'm not even going to try to sell you this antenna, nor am I going to gush over its features and benefits. But I will tell you how the magnetic loop antenna works, what is my experiences with it, and make a recommendation if this type of antenna is good for you. So please stick around to the end of the video for that. Chameleon did send me an F-Loop 3.0 Plus kit for consideration, and my comments and experiences with it are my own without any outside influence. Magnetic loop antennas consist of three components. The first and most noticeable is the large primary loop. This loop circumference is typically within one-third to one-eighth of the operating frequency range of the antenna. Inside this primary loop is a smaller conducting loop. RF energy is fed into the conducting loop and, it is, and the electromagnetic coupling between these two loops are what creates the RF radiation. The third part is the tuning capacitor, which is connected to the large primary loop. Loop antennas have a low radiation resistance, and the purpose of this capacitor is to eliminate reactants so that the loop becomes a resonant radiator. Since it is a resonant antenna, no antenna tuner or transmatch is required. Since magnetic loop antennas have a low radiation resistance, high currents flow through this primary loop. These current flows are what radiates the RF energy in the form of electromagnetic coupling. These current flows are a limiting factor of magnetic loop antennas as if you give them, if you give them too much transmitter power, this capacitor will arc and short circuit. With that said, magnetic loop antennas are a great choice for QRP or lower power operating, and we'll talk about the benefits and the features of that in a bit. But first, let's look at the Chameleon F-Loop kits. The F-Loop is the third generation of the popular Chameleon uh, magnetic loop antennas. Uh, the key difference between this and its predecessor is that the f is that the F-Loop 3 is smaller, lighter, and more compact. The key component of the F-Loop is the tuning box. This box consists of an air gap capacitor that is adjusted by this knob in the front. The knob engages a 6 to 1 Vernet drive for a very fine and smooth adjustments. The F-Loop is capable of operation between the 10 through 80 meter bands. On the top of this box is a switch, which engages two ranges of the capacitor, uh, the, the higher range, 10 through 30 meter bands, and the lower range, 40 and 80 meter bands. On the sides of this box are two sets of connectors. Uh, these UHF female connectors are for attaching a coaxial cable for the primary loop, and there are also two tabs for attaching an optional rigid aluminum loop. The F-Loop kit comes in three different configurations. The basic kit has everything you need for 10 through 80 meter operation, including the tuning unit, two sets of LMR400 coax cable radiators, a six and a half inch coupling loop, telescoping mast, 12 feet of coax cable with integrated chokes, one barrel connector, user guide, and a shoulder bag for carrying the kit. The plus kit contains all of the basic kit items with the addition of two additional pieces a two-section aluminum radiator for 10 through 40 meter operation, and a larger 7-inch coupling loop. And finally, the F-Loop Total Kit, which is not pictured, swaps out the aluminum radiator of the Plus Kit for a longer 146-inch piece of LMR400 and an 8-inch coupling loop. This total package is supposed to give you better performance, especially on the 15 through 40 meter bands. All three kits come with an extensive user guide that is full of information on the F-Loop assembly and operation. As hams, we don't like to read the user guide, but I encourage you to study this one before attempting to use the F-Loop. It really will mean the difference between success or not. Assembling your F-Loop magnetic loop antenna is pretty straightforward. I found that with a bit of practice, I can have this put together and ready to tune in a couple of minutes. Now for my F-Loop, I'm using a photographic tripod uh, to hold the, the loop assembly. 
The F-Loop doesn't really come with any type of stand, but there are a couple of options for supports. Chameleon sells either their spike mount or jaw mounts for mounting it close to the ground or on a picnic table or similar spot. On the bottom of the uh, tuning section, there is a uh, one quarter inch uh, a thread for uh, attaching the tuning box to a photographic tripod. Uh, I'm using a, a, a Bogan a tripod with their quick release plate in order to um, attach the tuning box to my uh, tripod. But you could use any type of mounting plate or, or tripod for that, for that matter, including a Chameleon's compact tripod. That would be a, a great option too. There's also a 3 8 inch hole for bolting it onto a clamp or other type of support. So you've really got a lot of different options for um, mounting uh, this antenna to a stand or support of some sort. To assemble the loop, first screw the telescoping mast onto the top of the tuning unit. Next, screw the 6.5 inch coupling loop to the top of the telescoping mast. The coupling loop should be oriented upwards with the UHF connection pointing downwards. Next, connect the LMR400 coaxial cable lens to each side of the tuning unit. Use a piece of the Velcro on the coax to attach the larger primary loop to the smaller coupling loop. Finally, raise the telescoping mast so that the primary coaxial loop takes on a circular shape. If you're using the aluminum radiator that comes with the Plus package, the assembly will be quite similar. There are three sets of screws to attach the aluminum sections. Use one set to connect the aluminum sections together and the other sets to attach the radiator to the two tabs on each side of the tuning unit. Then attach the seven inch coupling loop to the telescoping mast and raise the mast until it is about one quarter inch away from the aluminum radiator. For optimal performance, the two sections should not be touching. A small piece of Velcro is included to secure and stabilize the coupling loop to the primary or radiating loop. Now we get to the fun part, tuning your F-loop antenna. Magnetic loop antennas have a very high Q or quality factor. What that means is that their 2 to 1 bandwidth is very sharp and pronounced. As you go lower in frequency, the bandwidth shrinks. This loop will have approximately 210 kilohertz of bandwidth on the 10 meter band, but on 80 meters the bandwidth drops down to 6 kilohertz. This is due to the function and size of the radiating loop. To a certain degree, a larger loop will give you more bandwidth on the lower frequencies, but even, even with that, there are limits. Basically, if you want to change frequencies, you're going to have to readjust the antenna. There are two methods of adjusting or tuning the loop. The first is to use an antenna analyzer. Connect the analyzer and turn the tuning knob until you see a dip on the meter. As you are tuning, you will notice that touching the unit will slightly detune it. So as you are tuning, you need to step away from the unit to get a more accurate reading on the analyzer. The knob is very sensitive and the 6 to 1 reduction drive lets you do a very precise adjustments. When you get it in the, into the ballpark, it will take very slight movements of the knob to hit that sweet spot. The second method to tune a loop is to listen to your transceiver. As you turn the knob, you will hear the noise level increase and then decrease. This point of maximum noise is the sweet spot of the antenna and the result of your tuned frequency. After adjusting for maximum noise, make a test transmission and check the SWR and make any minor adjustments until you are at the minimum. You may not always hit a 1 to 1 match, but anything under 2 to 1 SWR is fine and the antenna will operate quite well. Normally, magnetic loop antennas of this size are limited to 10 through 40 meters. The F-Loop 3.0 breaks that limit with 80 meter support. It does that by adding a second piece of LMR400 cable to this primary loop um, of the antenna. This doubles the length of the primary loop so that it can resonate on the lower bands. To use the F-Loop on the 80 meter band, take the second included piece of LMR400 cable and connect the two segments with the barrel connector. Then connect the two ends of the longer cable to the tuning unit, making two large loops around the coupling loop. Secure the loops with the Velcro strap. Finally, set the switch on the tuning unit to the lower frequency range and tune or adjust the antenna. You will have about 6 kHz of bandwidth on 80 meters, so tuning will be quite sensitive. 
What are my experiences with the Chameleon F-Loop Magnetic Loop Antenna? Generally, I had a lot of fun with this antenna. It sets up and tears down quickly, it is reasonably efficient, and by virtue of the use of A or magnetic fields, it is highly resistant to man-made noise. That makes these antennas great choices if you're in an urban environment or a residential area that is prone to RF interference. I took this antenna out for a few Parks on the Air activations to test its performance. CQ, CQ, Parks on the Air, CQ, Parks on the Air, KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo Niner, Victor, Bravo Romeo, calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Kilo, Charlie One, Papa Delta Whiskey. Kilo, Charlie One, Papa Delta Whiskey, nice signal, 5-9 into Kilo, 1473. back to you. Thank you very much. I uh, love your videos and I appreciate all you do. And the antenna that I got up in here is a uh, 49 to 1 NFED that I watched off one of your videos. All right, that's great. <laughs> great to hear. So I'm glad to, I'm glad the NFED's working well for you. You got a great signal. I'm running, yeah, I'm trying a new, new antenna myself, QRP with a magnetic loop. So um, yeah, we'll see how it, how it does today. Well, you're coming in loud and clear into uh, mic echo, so I give you at least a 5-2 with that right now, especially doing what you're doing. Well, I'll take the 5-2 QRP, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, I uh, really appreciate it. You have a great day. Well, you too, 73 and put on. November 4, Yankee, November uniform. November 4, Yankee, November uniform. Nice signal, 5-5 five, five into Kilo, 1473. Back to you. QSL on the 5-5 five, five and QSL on the 1473. You are also 5-5 five, five in Richmond, Virginia. QSL? QSL, the Richmond, Virginia. And uh, thanks a lot for the contact today. Thank you very much for the park and have a great day. 73. You too. Take care, 73. Uh, KB9 VBR, parks on the air. QRZ. Come on, watch. Six. Romeo Charlie. Kilo six, Romeo Charlie, five three into Kilo one four seven three. Back to you. Kilo six, uh, Romeo Charlie, uh, do you copy? Oh, okay, uh, Mike, I'm sorry. You're very, very weak. You're, uh, you're about a three by three. 3x3 three three in California. Uh, appreciate all your videos. Over. All right. Well, thanks for the 3x3. Three three. Yeah, we're only running QRP today, so um, it's uh, signal reports greatly appreciated, but you're coming in 5.8 in, into the park here. Well, what is my uh, signal report again, Mike? Uh, you're 5.8 into the park. 5.8 into the park. 5.3, did you say? 8. 8. 5.8. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and uh, again, thanks uh, for all that you do for uh, Parks on the Air. KB9 BBR, K6 Romeo Charlie Dave in California. All right, Dave. Well, thanks for the California. Uh, you have a great day in 7-3. Uh, this is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Whiskey Juliet 1, Mike Kilo. Whiskey Juliet 1, Mike Kilo, nice signal, 5-5 five, five, into Kilo 1473. Back to you. QSL, you're 5-6, five 5-6 and six, five and six into New Hampshire. All right, well, thanks a lot for the New Hampshire today. It's greatly appreciated. Not a problem. Enjoy the rest of your day, 7-3. The antenna paired really well with my Yesu FT817 QRP transceiver. I would think that this is an excellent uh, companion also for the ICOM IC705, the Elecrack KX series, or the Zygu G90 or 6100 low power rigs. Magnetic loop antennas are often characterized as QRP antennas, and the F loop can handle up to 25 watts with sideband and 10 watts CW or digital. If you use more power than that, uh, the air capacitor inside the tuning unit will start to arc. And therein lies the, one of the problems or misconceptions that magnetic loop antennas are poor performing antennas. In reality, they're not. A magnetic loop will work just as well as other antennas. At their best, a magnetic loop 
on the upper bands is comparable in performance to a dipole. At their worst, uh, they might be 6 dB or 1 S unit lower than an optimized 3 element beam antenna. Uh, which brings me to my on the air test. So today we're going to try something a little bit different. I'm set up with the uh, Chameleon F loop and I'm going to run this for about a half hour, 45 minutes on FT8 and uh, see how many signals, how many contacts I can make. And then I'm going to switch to the quarter wave vertical antenna and run that for about a half hour, 45 minutes and see what kind of results I get with that. And see if we can compare the signal reports uh, between the uh, vertical antenna and the loop antenna and determine what kind of difference there are between the two. Looking at the data, the magnetic loop performed quite favorably when compared to my customary quarter wave vertical antenna. On FT8, uh, the signal reports were uh, equivalent. Uh, using my Yesu FT817 and 5 watts of power, I was uh, ran both antennas on the 20 meter band for about 45 minutes each. And in that time period, received about 18 contacts on each antenna. Uh, with the magnetic loop, I gave an average signal report of a minus 9 and received a report of minus 11. Uh, with the vertical, I gave a signal report of a minus 13 and received a minus 12 dB. To me, that isn't much of a difference. In fact, the only difference that I can tell is at looking at maps of the contacts. The distance achieved with the vertical were further than the magnetic loop. But that could be attributed more towards uh, the, uh, the vertical antenna's propensity for having a lower RF radiation, tangle, uh, RF radiation angle of takeoff. So what are the downsides of the Chameleon F loop antenna? I don't think that there really is anything negative about this antenna on its own. Uh, it is a highly engineered and well-constructed piece of equipment. It does what it says it does. Uh, but the negatives uh, relate to magnetic loop antennas in general. Uh, first is its low power capability. I know a lot of people aren't into QRP um, operations and so the 25 watt limit on sideband may be a turnoff. Chameleon does offer an optional power compensator that allows you to have, run up to 60 watt sideband uh, with the loop, uh, but these, these are categorized as low power antennas. The second downside is the relatively narrow bandwidth. If you change frequencies, you will need to, to retune the antenna. You certainly will have more bandwidth on 10 and 15 meters, but on 20 meters and lower, the bandwidth approaches uh, paper thin margins. You can, uh, be, it, this can be great for uh, rejecting adjacent noise and signals, but uh, if you're a hunt and pounce kind of person, uh, you're going to find uh, this, this bandwidth highly limiting. I think these two limitations of magnetic loops uh, really lend themselves to digital and CW operations. Uh, if, you're, if you're a CW operator, you're going to love this uh, antenna. Uh, the weak signal modes like FT8 and the narrow bandwidth of CW really make these antennas shine. And being that, they are, that we are at the peak of the solar cycle, uh, we can also take advantage of their enhanced performance on those higher HF bands. Since magnetic loop antennas also exploit the atromagnetic fields of radiation, they can be successfully used indoors with a minimal performance loss. H fields have better penetration through walls and glass. So if you live in an apartment condo or have an HOA limit, uh, this might be the type of antenna that gets you on the air at home. In high RF noise environments uh, like urban areas, uh, residential areas, their enhanced signal to noise ratio will also be of a benefit and you might be able to hear things that with a conventional antenna you haven't heard before. So there you have it. This is the, my review of the Chameleon F-Loop version 3.0 magnetic loop antenna. I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions or comments about the F-Loop, please leave them down below. I'll answer them as I'm able to. I'll also post uh, some bonus material of my Park Sunny Air sideband activation for my patrons. Becoming a member over at patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas will unlock that content for you. But that's it for now. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day in 73.